This is DC Lesson 1, Part C, with Dr. Ken. About this lesson, we're going to introduce the terms open circuit, closed circuit, and short circuit. We're going to explore the electric circuit and the components and their symbols. We're going to do that using our textbook, Electrical Principles, Chapter 1.7, 8 and 9. So here's our basic circuit, kind of done as what we might call a connection diagram. So let's have a look at what our circuit is made from. So we have a voltage source, in this particular case a battery. Might be a carbon battery, <clears throat> it might be an alkaline battery. We have conductors or wires, that's these bits here, and we have some kind of load. In this particular case, it's a lamp. So here we've got current flowing, and remember we're using conventional current flow, just as a reminder, current flowing from the positive through our conductor up into the lamp, through the element, back down onto the conductor and then back of course to the negative side. So basic electric circuit has a voltage source, a path, current flowing through it and through of course a load. So four components, voltage source, Path, current, load. So we're now going to add a switch so we can control what's going on. So basically we're adding a purposeful open circuit. So adding a switch allows the current to the load to be turned on and off. Did you notice the term used there? It's very, very important that you pick this up as early as possible. Adding a switch allows the current. We are switching the current to the load on and off. We are not switching the voltage. We are not switching the load. We are switching the current. So here in our first diagram we have current flow through our switch because it's closed or it's on, through, up into our lamp, out and back to the battery. The result is we get our lamp on. We switch our lamp off now and you can see here we've created an open circuit. Therefore there is no current flow and our lamp is not operating, it's greyed out. So the important thing I want you to pick up here is add a switch allows the current to the load to be turned on and off. It's the current we're turning on and off, nothing else. Now we're adding a fuse. The fuse, by adding a fuse to the circuit, it protects it against overload or overcurrent. So again, as long as the fuse is intact and you can see here our fuse. Our fuse is a intentional weak link. So as long as we don't exceed the amount of current that the fuse is designed for, lamp and circuit will operate. But if something happens Maybe we get a short circuit of some kind inside our lamp and we're no longer going through all of the lamp but we're only going through a part of the lamp's element. Even though the switch is closed, you'll see here our weak link. The fuse has got hot and instead of emitting light, it's actually just melted the conductor creating an 
open circuit therefore protecting the rest of the circuit in actual fact most protective devices are here to protect the cable they protect the wire that's what they do whether it's a fuse circuit breaker its primary job is to protect the wiring so by adding a fuse to the circuit it protects it against overload or overcurrent by having a designed weak link so let's look at diagrams a circuit diagram shows how components in a circuit are connected the diagram is drawn using symbols for each of the components in the circuit all electrical components have their own symbol which are actually visible metaphors for what they do and Australian standard symbols are used for our electrical trades so here's an example we have a drawing of a man or a gentleman on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have a symbol so a symbol is not an exact representation as I said before a symbol is a visual metaphor so symbol is simply a visual metaphor visual metaphor so visual metaphor is a symbol so here's some common components that we've been using in our presentations so far here's what a battery looks like but this is its symbol or its visual metaphor even a car style battery this may be what it looks like but you can see its visual metaphor is not that different from a single cell battery except this indicates there are multiple cells a lamp is just a circle and we put a loop in the middle of a circle that, to indicate the filament with a fuse it's just a rectangle with our fuse wire through the middle of it sometimes you might see the symbol drawn like this and they do that in the middle of it same symbol just shows it is an inbuilt weakness for the fuse a switch now if the switch is in the normally closed position you can see here it's been drawn closed or in the on position if it's normally off it's drawn in the open position off and you can see here it's drawn open so each of the components has its own symbol or its own visual metaphor and again here are some more visual metaphors or abstractions so you can see here resistors can be drawn as rectangles or zigzaggy lines an ammeter is often drawn as a circle with an A in the middle same with a voltmeter a motor inductors are just coils, coils of wire so we've just shown coils of wire switches you can actually use a lamp so in this particular case you've just got a cross through it indicating a lamp here it's a gas field lamp a neon lamp capacitor transformer voltage source DC diode so again my point is simply they're just visual metaphors that kind of represent what they look like conductor connectors connections so single conductor reasonably straightforward if two wires cross each other but are not connected you can just see the two wires crossing but if the wires are all connected together through some kind of terminal system we put a dot to indicate the terminal and again here we've got four wires all connected together and you can see again here's the physical representation but when we draw it we just simply use dots 
to indicate that the wires are connected together. So what's the difference between a connection diagram and a circuit diagram? So that's what we're doing here. On the left hand side we have a connection diagram which uses the physical pieces of equipment. We've drawn a battery so it looks like a battery. We've drawn a fuse so it looks like a fuse. A switch so it looks like a physical switch and a lamp so it looks like a physical lamp. So that we would call a connection diagram. On the right hand side we've used some symbols rather than the actual devices. So we've used a battery symbol for our battery in the circuit. We've used our fuse symbol for our fuse in the circuit. Switch symbol for our switch. And of course, finally, our lamp symbol. So connection diagram on the left uses graphics that represent what the components actually look like. A circuit diagram uses their symbol representation. So here's a range of switches you can see here. Um, a is a miniature toggle. B is a power rocket toggle switch. C is what we would call a light switch mech or mechanism. D, both these Ds over here are toggles. E, both of these here are push buttons. You just push down on the button to operate them. F is a rotary selector switch, sometimes called a wafer switch because it's kind of made up out of all these wafers. Um, and G, these two over here are limit switches. So they've got a mechanical arm on them of some kind that operates the switch. And here's the context to the switches. So there are some switch examples. Cables and connectors. So over here we've got tunnel terminals and of course individual screw terminals. So quite if in, often in domestic wiring we will use these screw connectors and often inside light fittings and things the like you'll see the use of tunnel terminals. Cable types A is what we call TPS thermoplastic sheath. So it's mains power wiring used in domestic installations. B is 12 volt garden lighting, sometimes called figure eight, because it tends to twist up like a figure eight. And then C is different types of conductors, so what we would call building wires. So these ones down here, we would call those building wires. And they're single insulated, where the TPS, the thermoplastic sheathing, is double insulated. The outer white sheath and then the inner, inner color sheath. So this is double insulated, single insulated, single insulated. So what is an open circuit? So again, I've got a little word of warning here. And the reason I've got the little warning symbol up here is that we're using a water analogy. So this water analogy is okay for now. So at the simple end of DC, our water analogy is okay. But there is going to come a time, and it's not too far away, where the water analogy will no longer work for what we have to describe. So what I want to get in your heads nice and early is that the water analogy is an okay way to start, but it's not a good way to build a good mental model in your head. So if you want to know a little bit more about mental models, please um, go to my website called Wired for Imagination, and where I teach a lot of people about how to use different kinds of metaphors to build the appropriate kinds of mental models you need for learning electrical physics.
but for now water is okay so here on this diagram we've got what we call an open circuit it's the first one you can see here got a break in the pipe so got a break in the pipe therefore it doesn't matter how hard this pump pumps around or how much pressure it tries to develop if there's no flow of water up through here no flow then you won't get any pressure and nothing's going to happen and with electricity it's very similar here we've got an open circuit therefore we have all the potential in the world 12 volts of potential is still here the load is still here but no current is going to flow because as the current gets to here it stops it's got nowhere to go so that's what we call an open circuit and open circuits are good things a switch is a is a positive open circuit so we've used switches and open circuits to control when we want flow to occur and when we don't want flow to occur okay next is a closed circuit so this is like closing the switch and you can see here we've got our water flow up round through our pump and back into our tank and work is being done and similarly with our electrical system we have potential through the load up through the lamp and back out so we have current flowing so this is a closed circuit now here's a tricky one this is a short circuit and it might be a little bit hard to see but you can see our pump has had an extra piece of pipe installed which circuits the pump so water gets sucked up but instead of going out through the tap it goes back around and around and around through the pump so hydraulically we call that a short circuit and we could do the same thing here we could put a piece of wire across our battery now by the way don't do this at home batteries can provide a lot of current and a lot of energy with a short circuit and that wire will get very hot very quickly but also you can see the battery will get hot and you can create some horrendous amount of damage but as you can see the vast majority of the current is now flowing through the short circuit and almost no current just a tiny tiny little bit of current would flow through our lamp but not enough current to make it turn on or make it glow so very small amount of current goes through the lamp but not enough to make the load operate and glow the rest of it's going through here so you can see here like I said warning 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 in this particular case our water analogy only partially describes what's going on so the reality is we would get a little bit of water flow dripping out of here electrically just a few drips so that's why I say be very careful with the water analogy it doesn't always work perfectly So I hope you've enjoyed uh, lesson number one, part C, Dr. Ken signing off.